More sunflowers? Oh yeah. It's just the beginning of September down here in zone 8B in South Georgia and we still got probably at least 100 days before our first frost. So I'm going to get some more sunflowers in the ground today. Today we're going to be planting some dwarf sunflowers which I've never planted before. Just a few weeks ago this plot here was in full bloom with our joker sunflowers and our chocolate cherries and those have since done their thing came in here with the mower on high and knocked them down we'll let these stalks dry out a little bit and uh, set the mower on low and kind of grind all that up and we'll be ready to turn over this plot and plant something else here maybe some fall crops maybe a cool season cover crop something like that so sunflowers are done here and then we've got this little spot here where I just transplanted some sunflowers four rows and these are a couple of varieties that we are trialing to see if we want to add to our seed lineup then the next year we've got uh, two rows of each variety here we've got a variety called gypsy charmer and a variety called terracotta and we just had a few seeds of each so that's why we put them in as transplants these have only been in the ground a day or two they'll start taking off pretty soon and uh Hopefully the bees over there enjoy these guys and can't wait to see what kind of blooms these make. Dad also has three varieties in his garden that he's trialing. So we'll be able to show you those once they get up and blooming as well. And today we're going to be filling this kind of skinny long plot here with these dwarf sunflowers and maybe even a couple taller varieties. This is where we had our South Anna butternut squash. We've got that cleaned up, ready to plant here. Uh, still a good bit of nice compost in the ground. The good thing about that South Anna butternuts, it provides such good ground cover that all of our compost and soil amendments don't burn up like they do normally uh, because, you know, those squash just kind of consume this whole plot. So you can see those kind of dark specks in there. We still got a good bit of compost and soil amendment in there, which is always good to see. So. This plot here is about 25 foot wide, 60 foot long, and we're gonna fill it up. So we've got three dwarf varieties here, and these are fairly new to the site. We just added them a few weeks ago. We got this Mardi Gras blend, which is a nice colorful blend of dwarf sunflowers. We got this Sunspot dwarf sunflower, and this one looks a lot like the teddy bear. It's a double bloom, really nice kind of fuzzy, velvety looking sunflower. And we got this Sun Gold, dwarf sunflower which looks more like a traditional sunflower but it's dwarf it's shorter and then on the back side which i'll kind of show you my plan in a minute here we're going to plant these santa fe sunset sunflowers which are taller ones so three dwarf varieties and one kind of traditional taller variety so these dwarf sunflower varieties which i've never planted before are only supposed to get about three foot tall but the neat thing is, is that the heads, the flower heads, are the same size as the taller versions of these sunflowers. So you still get nice, you know, big sunflower heads there, just on a smaller plant. Now, why would you want to plant a dwarf sunflower as opposed to a big one? Well, maybe you have containers that you're planting in. Maybe you just have a small raised bed garden. The dwarf sunflowers would be perfect for that. Also, maybe if you're using them as a cover crop, kind of like we're going to be doing today, and you don't have a big mower to chop them down, the shorter ones obviously are going to be a lot easier to cut down and remove once they're done doing their thing. Another cool way to plant them, and kind of what we're going to do today, is try to do some kind of dimensional planting here. So we're going to plant the dwarf ones kind of on this side where I'm standing now of the plot, and on the back side over there, we're gonna plant the taller ones. So we kind of have the scale of shorter to taller. And I think it's gonna look pretty cool. We'll just have to see. Now when I'm planting sunflowers, a lot of them on a big plot like we're gonna be doing today, 25 by 60, I like to use my Hoss Garden Seeder. I've transplanted them. I showed you some earlier that I transplanted. And if you're just doing a few, transplants work great. But today, when we're planting like this, I'm going to direct seed them. It's a lot faster, a lot more efficient. I really like the spacing we did on that previous plot. I showed you that we already mowed around three foot seemed to be kind of magical number as far as 
getting them nice and thick, having good ground cover for good weed suppression. So we're gonna aim for kind of that spacing and we're gonna fill up this plot completely. Before we do it, we need to go check our seed plate, make sure we got a good seed plate so our Hoss garden seeder performs well for us. So last time I planted them with a garden seeder, I think I was using a plate with five or six holes in it. And that worked okay, but it, it put them a little too close. And I found the, the more space you give them, the bigger the, the bloom heads you'll get. So I'm gonna use this number four plate here. We might have to modify it a little bit, which has four holes in it, 19 divided by four. It's gonna give us a little under a five inch spacing, so just say four and a half, something like that, four and a third inch spacing, uh, which may be a little bit better for getting some bigger sunflower heads here. Now, this is gonna work great if all these seeds are relatively the same size. I don't know that they are. We're about to see. Hopefully they are, and we can just use one seed plate for everything here. So let's start checking them. Start off with our Mardi Gras blend here. See what we got as far as our seed size goes. We might have to make these holes a little bigger. We'll just have to see. So there's some seed. If they fit flat down inside those holes, which those do, that'll be all right. So I think the Mardi Gras is gonna be all right without modifying this plate. Let's check our sunspot. Let me put the Mardi Gras back in here. Take the sunspot here. See what we got. Those look to be about the same size. If we plant a few doubles here and there, not a big deal. I'm not super concerned about the thickness of this plate. Those are going to fit. <clears throat> you know, sunflowers, it's not like a food crop. I'm not as concerned with the spacing and the singulation as I would be with something like corn or beans. So give myself a little bit of leeway. Now these guys here are super, super tiny. This sun gold. We might need a different plate for those guys. Let me put those to the side. Those are significantly smaller than the other ones. Let's look at the Santa Fe sunset here. And yeah, those are pretty normal size right there. Those will work. Okay. So everything but the sun gold is going to work with this number four plate. Those seeds are way too small for those holes. I'll be planting a lot more seed than I want to plant. Let me see if I can find a plate that'll work with these guys. Okay, for these real tiny seeds, we're going to do a little different. So I found this blank plate here. This is a little thinner plate than this one. It's got the lip on it and I already drilled one hole in it just to make sure this was going to work. I'll show you what I did. So just laid this number four plate over the top of this blank plate. Make sure that D ring on there matches up a little bit. Take my glasses off. I can see a little better here. Make sure that D ring matches up and I just took my knife and kind of pointed it in the center that hole there kind of made me a little indention. You could do this with a drill bit, but I don't have any regular drill bits out here right now. Just my step drill bit that I'm gonna use. And uh, so I scribe me a little hole in there and then I'll just take my step drill bit and just drill me a tiny hole in there. We can always make that hole bigger as we need to. One more here. There we go. Now we can check this hole size. I see where we're at. If we need to make it bigger or smaller. Probably ain't gonna hurt to drill these out on this side just a hair. These four holes is gonna give us the same spacing on the others. We just got smaller holes because we're dealing with smaller seed. And looks like those fit in there just right. Yeah. So that's going to work a lot better for these tiny sunflower seeds than this big plate right here. So we'll just switch them out, which is really easy to do. Uh, when we get ready to plant the sun gold, we'll go with this plate. 
we'll use this plate on all the others. So it's nice that you can kind of customize these plates, make them do whatever you want them to do, whatever spacing you want, whatever hole size you want. You can set it up however you like it. Now changing these plates doesn't take long at all, but for the sake of only having to change it once, let's start off with our smaller plate here. That we're gonna plant just that one variety with, and then we'll switch over to the bigger plate for the rest of them. Get everything tightened down here, barely. Got my depth set on about a quarter inch. That's where I wanna be especially with these small guys. Put us a few seeds in here, get us started. I got a quarter pound, I should have plenty. Now, as I told you before, I got about 20 to 25 uh, feet of row width here to work with. So I think I should be able to squeeze in about six or seven rows. Uh, since we got four different varieties, I don't know if we can do two rows each. We may squeeze it a little closer, closer to two feet and try to get two rows of each in here. I'm not gonna measure this out. I'm just gonna eyeball it and we'll start at a point here, pick me out a spot down there on that end of the row and kind of just drive straight to it. Should be able to get them relatively straight that way. We're gonna measure out our row space and we're just gonna eyeball it, kind of try to get it consistent from one row to the next. All right, all right, all right. We ended up being able to squeeze eight rows in there. You can see my little cedar tracks in there. They're not geometrically perfect, but they'll work for a cover crop of sunflowers. So we've got two rows of the sun gold, two rows of Mardi Gras, two rows of sunspot. I only got one row of the Santa Fe sunset. I run out of seeds way down there towards the end of that row. But I had some chocolate cherry sunflower seeds in the freezer in there, or in the refrigerator, and um, I used them for this last eighth row right here. We grew that variety on the other plot I showed you before. Really like those. So those would be a nice addition to this kind of tall sunflower backdrop. So we'll have tall sunflowers here, those two rows, and the rest of these will be dwarf, and maybe give us a nice little kind of scaled up look there as they go from shorter to taller. I think it's gonna work out just right. We'll need to put some water on these, this soil here. It's pretty dry. And uh, I'll come in here this afternoon, run the overhead sprinkler for several hours, get these guys up and going, get them germinated, and uh, shouldn't take them long to jump up and start growing. Now I'll show you one thing that's cool about our cedar here. <clears throat> you can see that it empties almost completely. So unlike other cedars, they have a vertical pickup where you have to have a minimal amount of seeds in there for it to work. This one right here will empty out completely. Now if you do have extra seeds in there, it's not hard to take them out and put them back in the bag at all, but it's nice that uh, it will empty completely and you don't need a, a set amount of seeds in there for it to work right. Now this is probably the last sunflowers I'll plant this year as we'll get close to the spot where we're running out of time, but this will be a nice little way to finish out uh, the warm season with a good sunflower cover crop there. If you've never grown sunflowers as a cover crop, I'd highly, highly recommend it. Beautiful, do wonders for your garden as far as providing some ground cover, some weed suppression, and all your beneficial insects are gonna love it. Flock to your garden and hopefully do some good for your other vegetables you have planted. I'll put some links below to all the sunflower varieties we planted today. So you can go to the site and check those out. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and hit that bell button so you get notified every time we come out with a new video. And if you did enjoy this video, check out these other two sunflower videos right here. I think you'll really enjoy those as well. We'll see you next time.